Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by fans. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm joined here today with just Jack uh, this week. Say hello, Jack. What's up, guys? Just Jack. Isn't that a, wasn't that a, what, Will and Grace? Wasn't that a thing in Will and Grace? I don't know. One of those shows from the mid-thousands. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not, not the biggest Will and Grace fan, so, so I don't have to ask somebody else. But uh, uh, Mo's away on vacation, uh, so it's just us. Uh, we're going to bro it out uh, tonight as we prepare for uh, game one of the 2017 season, uh, beginning of the lane train. Uh, against Navy this Friday, 8 a.m. ESPNU. Uh, so we are tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about Navy. We actually last episode talked uh, a good deal about Navy. So if you want to, you know, talk more about Navy or hear what we had to say, you can check out last week's or two weeks ago's episode. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about Navy um, and then kind of dig deeper into the season expectations and what we feel this team really can do. Um, answer the poll from last week as well regarding number of wins, and then um, we'll uh, we'll get moving on. So uh, I guess we'll dig into it right now. Uh, so FAU, uh, I forgot to look at the line uh, right now. I thought Rick posted something about it uh, that it was down to like twelve uh, or twelve point underdogs. Originally started out as twenty one point underdogs. Uh, so you know the line is moving down, which is uh, which is positive. And, um, you know, I think part of, uh, part of the issue and, and why I don't necessarily want to make, you know, any, any of these kind of bold predictions, but uh, there's just so many unknowns. Um, and we'll talk a, a little bit about the quarterback battle in a little bit, but um, what do you – kind of on the, the surface level, Jack, what do, you, what do you think about Navy this year? Uh, what do you know? And um, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, Navy is a military academy uh, with an old school football, uh, old school uh, offensive style. Uh, they run out of the triple option. A lot of times out of the wishbone uh, with wing backs, you know, set up where tight ends normally are, a little bit further back from where tight ends normally are. Uh, it's one of the most difficult style of on- offenses to defend mainly because it is so rare in today's game. Uh, you have Georgia Tech, Georgia Southern, Army, Navy are basically the only ones that play out of it. Air Force plays out of a kind of a hybrid. So does Tulane. Um, and Nebraska throws it in there every once in a while. It's, it, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, it really depends on how well a defense can stay disciplined. That's what determines how well uh, – the defense can play against the option. You have to plug all the holes. You have to make sure you contain uh, the quarterback and the, uh, the running back or wing backs. Uh, it, a lot of communication uh, needs to take place. So when it comes to Navy's offense uh, in general, uh, their quarterback is going to be Zach Abbey. I think it's Abbey or Abbey. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So I apologize. <laughs> what is it? I think it's Abbey. Abbey? Uh, okay, so apologize if, if I was uh, pronouncing it incorrectly. Uh, <clears throat> Navy had a lot of quarterbacks last year. Uh, they went through three starting quarterbacks. Uh, A.B. had his very first start towards the end of the year in the Army-Navy game, as anyone that goes to one of the two main service academies, uh, getting your first start in that game is quite the challenge. Uh, he struggled. Uh, especially in the first half where he threw two interceptions uh, and then ended up losing to Army for the first time in, what was it, 15, 16 years? I don't even know, a long time. 2001? Something. I don't even – that's how long it's been since Army beat Navy. And they did it last year. Um, But he he bounced back. He kind of had that experience from the Army-Navy game. Bounced back against Louisiana Tech. uh, Had uh, three – contributed to three – uh, touchdowns and a shootout loss to uh, Louisiana Tech in their bowl game. Uh, so now, you know, he has experience. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, he is listed as a starter. Uh, this will be his first true away game, if that makes sense. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can um, cause some disruption 
break up their chemistry uh, and stay disciplined against uh, a rather inexperienced quarterback. If, if we're, if we're able to do that, then uh, I, I like our chances at least to stopping or slowing down them offensively come Friday. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it, again, there's, there's kind of too many, uh, there's too many new players. Uh, I think for, as far as offense goes, uh, Navy isn't returning very many starters on offense. Um, I think they have nine, if I read correctly, they have like nine starters uh, returning on the whole team. Um, so I don't know. There, there's a lot of new faces for FAU. Go ahead. What are you going to say? And, uh, you mentioned this earlier. Three uh, graduated offense alignment. Uh, right. Which, which um, is massive for an offense like that. Yeah. So I guess – you know, you, you could say that there's, you know, Navy's coming off a down year. Uh, is this going to – well, I quote down year. I guess you could say they still won nine games and went to the conference championship. Um, so I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't necessarily call it a down year. Uh, I guess you could say a disappointing year for them having lost to both Army and Air Force uh, and, and the, uh, the bowl game. So uh, if there was, was going to be a time, uh, you'd think with a somewhat – uh, green quarterback and, and some spots to fill on the offensive line, uh, that this might be a time uh, for us to do it, uh, to, to pull off the victory. Uh, and I think part of – obviously, we're going to have to – we're going to have to score points. We're going to have to control the ball uh, to keep the Navy offense off the field, which is what the triple option basically prevents you from doing, uh, really penalizes you for uh, – for, quick three and outs and, and short drives because they just hold on to the ball so much. But uh, I don't know. I mean, a, a big question mark, obviously, for FAU in this is the quarterback position. It's been very close close to the best. Um, we've gotten to see a little bit, um, like with the scrimmages and things like that. And I, I don't know. I guess people may say that uh, – you know, it's going to be Johnson because he's kind of the bigger time player. Um, but I don't think, you know, Kiffin doesn't have any any loyalty to him. Again, he's not Kiffin's recruit. He was recruited by uh, Charlie and Travis Trickett uh, from the previous uh, coaching staff. So I don't think he's partial to anyone. Um, and Jack and I were kind of discussing this beforehand. I, I think Johnson probably is the best athlete, and he can get out of bad situations um, – you know, if a play breaks down, but in this is in this kind of offense that that we're going to run, uh, is it's not necessarily going to be very pass heavy, but it's not going to require a mobile quarterback. So, are you going to want a quarterback that's uh, you know mobile that way? Or that many people have noted that Parr probably has the strongest the strongest arm, and then Driscoll's probably the most accurate. Um, I don't know. It, it'll it'll be interesting. Uh, interesting to see what happens. It, it's I, – I just don't want to give up on DeAndre Johnson, um, at least before he even had a shot to start a game yet. He is the most athletic out of the bunch. I have been itching for an athletic uh, dual-threat quarterback for quite some time. In NCAA, I'd always run uh, like a triple option out of a spread in the NCAA video game. Uh, so I needed that, that dual threat quarterback. And it's a shame that we haven't been able to uh, find one yet. Uh, thanks a lot, Melvin Germain, uh, the third. But uh, MG3. MG3. MG3, yeah, he's going to win a Heisman. There you go. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's – it, Kiffin said this. When it comes to the starting lineup, it might not be about the best individual players – will be starting the most athletic players, the most, uh, the strongest, the fastest can give us the best opportunity to win on that given day. Uh, if, if, if it's Driscoll on Friday, then it's Driscoll. If it's par, it's par. Uh, as long as we can make it to a bowl game, I don't care who's under center. 
<laughs> it's, um, I, I, I'd love to stay on the DeAndre train. It's great publicity for the program. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it could be, again, this is, this is the first game of the season, and if there hasn't been any very clear separation in the quarterback battle, there's a good chance the quarterback battle will continue on um, into the season. It could be after we get to Bethune and uh, whoever started the first game, they're, they're out. And, you know, it could be if Driscoll's starting this Friday, um, you know, and he has a bad game or doesn't, you know, Kevin doesn't see what he likes against – uh, Navy and Wisconsin, uh, it could be Johnson or Parr out there. So I, I don't think what we see on on Friday is going to be whoever starts. I would I, because there hasn't been any real clear separation. I, I think we'll probably see some sort of rotation in quarterbacks, and then by the third game, we're going to have things kind of settled. And that's exactly what happened. And again, we talked about this last last show. That's kind of what happened in two thousand and twelve. Uh, or two, excuse me, 2013 with Quez and um, Greg Hankerson. Yeah, where it was just kind of back and forth, and then that the ECU game, I think um, Quez kind of took over, even though Greg had, I think, the one touchdown pass in that game. But yeah, um, um, yeah, the one touchdown pass that was a rough one. I, I feel like we've always had some sort of a quarterback controversy here uh, years ago. It was, uh, geez Louise, Graham Wilbert and David Cooey, and then Stephen Graham, Curtis. Graham Wilbert and Stephen Curtis, and then uh, Hankerson and Quez, then throw in DJ Justy in there for a little bit. Mm. Quez got it, but then Quez got hurt uh, in, his, in his big final year, and Driscoll was thrown into it. And Driscoll, he had some bright spots, uh, but we still weren't – happy with the situation on comes par uh par starts threatening for his uh, starting job and now we have three guys you know when when can we just get a stable quarterback yeah it's that's i don't know when can we next get year we'll have you know a four-star quarterback and chris robinson uh yeah. in the mix anyways but um yeah so I, I don't know well we'll see we're not gonna we've already we've probably already talked too much about it and um like I said, I don't think who we see start on Friday night is really going to matter. Um, I think we're going to see a bit of a bit of rotation, a lot um, of rotation, as you can see from the depth chart. There's going to be a <laughs> lot of rotation on both sides of the ball, which is good because we finally have depth. Um, again, it just comes down on who can be the best on that play to help us win. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we're going to beat Navy again because it's such a hard team to compete against. Uh, but we'll, we'll find out in due time. Yeah, it it, w- it would be good. I mean, it's it, it would be great because coming back to the third game of the year, it'd be awesome to be one and one instead of zero oh and two. Um, and I think how we do in that Navy game is, I, I get it. I don't know. I think how the offense performs in that Navy game is going to be pretty telling on on the rest of the year, um, which is a good segue to uh, to what we're going to talk about next uh, as far as season predictions. Uh, so thank you all for those who, who voted on the poll, uh, the Twitter poll and the uh, poll that was on the Ellsness.com. And uh, mostly everybody, uh, very few people think we're going to win eight games. Uh, the vast, vast majority of people think uh, we're going to win six to seven games and be bowl eligible. Uh, nobody thinks we're going to win three games this year, which is pretty great. So, um, I don't know. And, and I'm, I'm right there. I, I think I'm more in the five to six win range. Uh, I'm looking at the schedule here. Navy and Wisconsin, I'm counting as a loss. So we're 0 2. Bethune, I see as a win. Buffalo, I see as a win. Middle Tennessee, that, Come I, on, that, that's a loss. There's, there's nothing we haven't beaten them since 2007. Um, I don't see if anything they've gotten better, um, and we haven't gotten good enough uh, to beat them. So I see that as a loss. So what we are two and three at that point. I don't know. How, how do you feel? How do you feel about Old Dominion? 
Uh, Old Dominion is a very popular dark horse uh, to be a contender in the East uh, when it comes to the media and the blogs that are covering Conference USA. Uh, their coach, uh, Wilder over there, a uh, great guy, is doing a really good job. Uh, put Old Dominion in really good position to take the East last year, and they fell just short. Uh, at ODU, I – without knowing so much about who's starting and who's not. Uh, I like us winning that one. Uh, we, we did it two years ago after the overtime loss to uh, UF. Uh, we, it's always a decent game uh, between us and them. No. We'll see how that one goes. But that, that's – FAU fans shouldn't just look right past them. Uh, right. They are being, not at all. They're, they're, they're being uh, liked by these experts for a reason. Yeah, well, we shouldn't look past. We shouldn't let, look past anybody because we're. Yeah, you shouldn't look past Bethune Cookman. Look what they did at FIU a couple years ago. That's true. Um, uh, then we've got North Texas at home. That's a win for me. Uh, Western Kentucky at Western Kentucky. That's that's a loss. the The Marshall game. We've got Marshall at home. The return of Trey Rodriguez uh, to FAU at that point in November. I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna count it as a win. Um, some people are saying that this will be Marshall's uh, bounce back year. I don't know. I, I'm I'm thinking that that we're gonna pull that out. Um, do you have any thoughts on Marshall? Uh, Chase Litton, if he stays healthy, um, he's a great quarterback, tall guy. What is he like six eight? It's insane how tall. No, he's not. Uh, from I don't know. I, T- Tampa Gaither, or Tampa Wharton. I can't remember. Um, he he went down pretty early last year, done for the season, and you could see just Marshall's offense just plummet since then. I mean, we we almost beat them. That goes to show how bad they were last. <laughs> uh, so if he stays healthy, now with the solid running game with Trey Rodriguez, it's going to come down to whether or not their defense can basically stop anybody at least once. Stop anything with a pulse. That's something that they really couldn't do well last year. And again, that's something we would know uh, when it comes to defenses last season. Uh, I see that as a loss just because we haven't beaten them yet. I don't see... Until this team shows me something different, this program shows me something different, the teams that have had our number, the coaches staff, staffs that have had our numbers, um, I don't see anything different happening yet. I'm, so I'm, I'm taking the L on that one. Okay. Uh, at Louisiana Tech, taking an L on that one. At FI or at at home against FIU, that's an easy win. Yeah, um, easy. That's easier than Bethune Cookman. Come on. Yeah. And then closing the year out at Charlotte. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna end the year. Uh, with a W on the road against Charlotte. Charlotte certainly improved. They beat us last year. Um, but I think we're probably about uh, about equal. So um, I, would, I would say that. So that puts me at what I had. Charlotte, FIU, Marshall, North Texas, Bethune, and Buffalo. Well, right? Yep. So that's, I'm, I'm about six wins. And I think – as, if we're looking at the year, so let's let's take away all kind of analysis um, and just just think about the year. Excuse me, more of a casual fan. Anything more than three wins, I, I think the pressure that's going to be on the team. Uh, everything we do is is going to be is going to be under a microscope. Everything Lane Kiffin does is going to be under a microscope. I think if we got to six wins, one, we're going to a bowl game because there's no bowl committee that's going to let Lane Kiffin stay at home. So if we get to six wins, we're going to a bowl. Um, other than that, I, I think five – I again, five to six wins. I'm leaning more towards five than six, that Old Dominion. Or, um, I'm kind of with you with the Marshall game, I should say. Um, so five wins – I guess it, it's it sucks to to say this, but you you, you almost have to be happy with five wins. <laughs> um, six wins 
is a good year. Seven wins is a very good year. Um, you know, seven means we beat Marshall or Middle. Um, yeah. Or maybe uh, I, I don't see us toppling Western Kentucky. They're still too strong. But I, I, um, I, I flip flop with that. I think uh, we have a better shot at beating Western than we can with Middle. I, I think Middle is so overrated or so underrated this year, and Western's overrated. Um, I mean, Richie well, James at, at Middle, and they still have Stock still throwing the ball. Uh, I, new coaching staff at Western. I don't know, man. Uh, how, how about this? Um, between Old Dominion, North Texas, Western, Marshall, and Tech, we need to win, uh, what, two out of those five? Just win two out of those five. And then get some more, uh, for lack of a better word, easier wins uh, against Bethune-Cookman, Buffalo, FIU, and Charlotte. And you're bull bound right there. Yeah. Just, gotta, just really have to, have to steal one and then do what we have to do against – uh, lesser teams. And that's no disrespect to Charlotte, who's I think is going to play well this year. Uh, FIU, I mean, we, we joke with them all the time, but, I mean, Magoo and uh, Butch Davis over there, he's, he's got that team going. They have a, some decent recruiting classes. Um, they're going to be a lot better than, uh, than they've been. Uh, but, I mean, I, I'd still pick us over them. I'd still pick us over Charlotte. So, if, if we – can just take care of what we have to do, which is something we haven't been able to do in years, and steal one or two uh, against better teams, uh, then we can be bull bound. I think it's as easy as that. Easy peasy. It, that's it. We're gonna we're gonna win the Bahamas Bowl. I think Jack just said that's that's what he just said. Yeah, it's, it's um, like us against Central Michigan. Repeat <laughs> of uh, bring on Dan Lefever. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and. Who knows what happens? We beat Navy on Friday, and then we'll have a whole other discussion on this yeah. next week. Changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> Changes. But um, trying to think if there was – I mean, that was, yeah, five to six, uh, and we go bowling. And, I, I mean, you you got to say that would be uh, – that, that would be a success. I mean, four wins would be pretty disappointing. We could get four wins with Charlie. You know, we didn't bring – and I think, that, again, the, the president and, and Pichon know this as well. They didn't bring Lane Kiffin here to win five games. You know, he's not making $950,000 a year to win five games. He's here to win to win the win conference championships and get us ranked. Obviously, this is the first year of that. But um, also, I mean, if, if you think back, how many of the games uh, were just so painful last year that we we were up and and I I did this last year and uh, one of last year's shows uh, I think that the, the amount of games that we lost by one score or less or the amount of games that we lost when we were leading in the fourth quarter or at halftime like you know you half of those games and Charlie Partridge is still the head coach here you know if we win half of those games uh, because the the record would it wouldn't be flipped, but we ha- we would have won six and seven games the past couple of years. So, you know, maybe with a more ex- more experienced coaching staff. Because if you think about it, um, uh, this is another thing I, I I talked about last year. But uh, we had a head coach who had never had any head coach experience. We had an offensive coordinator who had never had Division One offensive coordinator. We had, uh, What's his face? Uh, Brian Wright was an FCS coordinator, so it's Division One, but FCS. So no Division One FBS head coaching or uh, coordinator experience, right? And yeah. Rock wasn't like that uh, defensive coordinator as well. So we now have um, we now have that in Bryles and Kiffin in previous head coaching positions, and even Chris Kiffin. Um, was assistant or associate um, or co-defensive coordinator last year at Ole Miss. So um, there's – there's a, and that alone right there could be good enough to get us those two or three wins that we would have lost previous years. We'll, we'll see. Those coaches have seen a lot in their years. Um, all three of them have been in the news for, uh, let's just say, the wrong reasons recently. Uh, one thing I will say is that I'm just happy that the talk is over and we can finally start hitting another school 
uh, soon. That's that's all I'm going to say on it. We have the experience now, both in coaching staff and uh, with the players themselves. I, what, last year, we were the third youngest uh, mm -hmm. starting 22, second youngest starting 22 in the nation. The year before that, we were like the second youngest. We just kept putting in the younger guys in. Yeah. So now both sides of the ball more experienced. Add some of these Power Five uh, transfers. We'll see, man. We'll see what happens. I'm just happy we're just playing some football. Yeah, it, it'll be it'll be be nice to have something to, I guess, for the beginning of the season to look forward to <laughs> um, well, on the least, weekend. So be fun, that's for sure. Uh, you know, I'm all the way up here in Tampa, and I I can just feel the excitement back in Boca. Um, can you feel the Atlantic rising? Yes, the Atlantic is rising. We better take cover if that's the case. We're in some yeah. trouble. You guys are in trouble. I'm fine over here then. Uh, um, we'll probably start to rise too. But uh, I mean, but you, you can feel it though. You can feel that rise. You can feel the excitement. It's something I haven't felt since the Miami game, the home game, a couple years ago. Years yeah, ago. I saw the the student. Uh, all the student tickets are are sold out, um, yeah. which is pretty pretty positive. And uh, athletics, I will say, athletics has done a pretty good job of making sure the students get involved uh they get they had i think it was a t-shirt giveaway last night we're recording this on on wednesday night i think on tuesday night they had something where they they got students into the stadium into the into the student section um and they gave out t-shirts and the line was from basically the the main entrance of the stadium back to um stadium garage yeah basically so uh that's that's the, again, and this happens every single year. This has been happening since Lockhart, even where the students show up for the first game, and then we don't give them anything to come back for. So uh, the students are going to be there. If we can put on a good show, um, maybe pull out the victory. It, it's going to be the students are going to be there. So um, and then also the the Boca is going to be there again. It's people people want to see what Lane Kiffin's doing. People want to see what FAU is doing. Um, so we just got to give people a reason other than the diehard fans. We have to give them a reason to come back and be interested. So, um, we got $950,000, you know, reasons basically, uh, for them to come back. So hopefully we can make that work. Sounds good to me. So, um, yeah, I think that will about do it for us. Kind of a, a, a shorter show, less, uh, information dense, uh, show like we normally do, but we we wanted to um, kind of get our thoughts out there about the Navy game and uh, and talk about the season a little bit. So um, thanks for for joining me, Jack. Just you and of um, just Jack. We'll be back. We'll be back to full staff next week, and um, we'll get going forward. So definitely make sure to check us out on SoundCloud. If you're not there, you can just search Inside the Burrow. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on uh, FAUOwlsNest.com where the show's always posted. And um, hopefully next week we are uh, cheersing to Baiting Navy. So for Jack and everybody else in Owl Nation, thanks, and we'll see you next time. Go Owls.